What is up? Welcome back, Mile Higher Homies, to Mile Higher Podcast. With Kendall and Josh. We are back, guys. What is up? We are here today with another very interesting episode. We are going to be talking about the shocking truth about our criminal justice system, specifically here in the U.S., but we'll also be talking a little bit about different prison systems around the world as well because you know we have to compare our system to others to some things so we are going to be diving into that um, for the majority of the episode today but we've also got some very interesting uh, sort of subtopics today and that includes the Chris Watts you know murder of his wife and two daughters and just that whole situation because that Mm -hmm. hits close to home for us literally so we'll be talking about that and then also be talking about um, some world news actually with uh, a strange Russian satellite which oh yeah this shit's crazy dude could be a weapon so this oh. is very interesting <laughs> damn but before we get into things we just first want to mention bilegalmeds.com for your CBD products and pain relieving needs we use the cloud nine syrup quite a bit so mm-hmm. uh, we really like all their products and you get 20% off your order using the code mile higher which is a great deal. And also we love our monk personal oil diffuser pens as well. Somewhere on the table here, but they're all over here. I've been hoarding them, (laughs) but yeah, if you uh, (coughs) just need to chill, the CBD products are great. And so are the monk oil diffuser pens, which there's a link in the description for 10% off your order. So definitely check that out. We are big fans of both of those products. And you definitely want to try CBD. If you haven't tried it yet, it is just life changing for me. Like ever since I started using CBD on a daily basis, I feel like it's really, really helped me to just be able to get through. Like, I feel like I'd just be in bed without CBD, you know, uh, it allows me to, to kind of get through my day better and get through the pain and help me sleep, stay asleep. If you like have trouble getting up in the middle of the night, yeah, so, it does. A, it has a lot of medicinal effects, which we will cover in way more detail oh, in yeah. an upcoming episode about the hemp industry yes. and specifically around CBD and the whole controversy with you know marijuana and mm-hmm. THC and all that kind of stuff. So, yes, be on the, the code for that. for that, by the way, guys, is mile higher for twenty percent off on illegalmeds.com. Right. Anyway, let's get into it. We have like a ton to talk about. Yes, we do. So we're going to make the intro short Short. and sweet today. (laughs) Short, short. But as always, we want to just thank all of our supporters. Thanks for everybody reviewing the podcast. Like seriously, it's Mm -hmm. it's awesome. You guys have been leaving ratings, reviews on iTunes. It really helps us out. We're on the charts and it's all thanks to you. And uh, I also wanted to just quickly shout out Brittany F and Hannah F who are our new seller patrons this month. Thank you guys so much. Seriously, we really appreciate it, which our patrons are literally funding our new podcast studio, which Mm -hmm. we're building, which starts tomorrow. Actually, Mm -hmm. I'm super pumped. We're breaking ground. Ready to get out of our basement, out of the the bedroom down here, you know, into a little bit more space, get rid of the green screen Mm -hmm. and have a really like good setup space and some guests hopefully coming soon. Definitely. So today's question comes from Sandy and she says, hey, guys. Do you think the government and or other organizations put additives or chemicals and or genetically modify our food as a way to control us or to make us slower mentally and physically? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I feel like people ask these questions and then I'm always just like, yep, that sounds about right. Yeah, that's that sounds like what's going on to me from things I've seen. You okay over there? Yeah, sorry. I dropped a monk pen. but <laughs> Oh, I can rescue with my foot. I got mad foot grabbing <laughs> skills. Watch this. Oh, shit. Never mind. All right. That's all right. We have like 80 others here, so we're good. No, I can skip it. But yeah, so my whole take on it is I think there is a lot more to, Look. you know, the genetic, genetically modified. <laughs> nice. Good job. I'm telling you, Talent. I can pick up anything with my feet because I'm Talent. lazy and I'd rather use my feet. Anything, huh? Okay. Good to know. <laughs> Mental note on that. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so like we talked about this a little bit in our podcast episode about the DuPont family, because they have a lot to do with chemicals and additives and GMOs and things like that, which when you look at all everything as a whole and, you know, you know what we know, there's a good chance that they are doing things to sort of influence our body, the way our mind works. I mean, a lot of this has scientific proof behind it as far as some of the additives that they use, as well as how they genetically modify things, which it's, you know, genetically modified is a very, you know, Loose term. Loose term. Yeah, exactly. Because like they genetically modify things for, you know, 
to reasons that are totally legit and you know they have to in order to make the crops grow better in a certain climate things like that or you know to be hardy but they also do some things that are a bit a bit more sketchy so to answer your question sandy yes i do think that they have um they are involved with some additives i mean you look at fluoride and water things like that you oh know, yeah which that should be another episode coming soon i think the water episode we oh, talk about yeah. water we need to do a whole about just fluoride like and everything episode about how it affects your pineal gland and things like that not so, only that but just like the garbage that yeah your health i mean water just, in general yeah the la like we need to talk about flint how that happened yes, yes. what happened exactly absolutely so the water episode okay yeah for sure we'll do that one soon yeah let us know if you're excited for that but that is a great question sandy thank you so much all right first order of business is i want to talk about some news that came out this week that I think maybe grace the headlines briefly, but then it was like lost in the Trumpster fire that they the report Trumpster on every day. Fire. So, dude, I saw it on CNN. That's where I saw it. They were like, they did, yeah. Oh no, it was Wolf, and he's like, breaking news: the U.S. is worried <laughs> that Russian satellite is really a weapon. Yeah. So this is this is coming from this statement that was made is coming from a guy named Liam Poblet, who's a top U.S. diplomat on arms control issues. And he suggested that American intelligence agencies have reason to believe that a Russian satellite may be surveying U.S. space assets or practicing to attack them in the future. So that is a bit frightening. So there's a satellite. It's called the Cosmos 2519, which was launched into space by Russia last year. And basically, I mean, most of us don't know what's being launched into space, you know, like yeah. they launch a lot of shit into space, including our own government. And if you didn't know this, there is actually a top secret classified space plane. It's called the X-37B, I think. Ooh. And it's works for the Air Force. Nobody knows what it does up there, but they launch it on missions and it flies around and orbits the planet and does whatever it does. It orbits the whole planet? Yeah, it goes up into space, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so <laughs> we have little to no idea exactly what things are doing up there, but this it's interesting really that they're specifically worried about this Russian satellite. I've never even thought of this happening. That's like really scary. Yeah, it is very <laughs> scary. So, you know, obviously when this you know when they talk about this they're like oh it could be this could be that it could be something totally just normal and you know it may not be a weapon it may not be something that's used to attack our satellites or something like that and the russians actually responded and they they said straight out that this is just slanderous and basically false that this was some type of weapon or that they're doing some sketchy business with it but it's interesting that the actual you know like our intelligence yeah. agencies are saying we need to track this thing. We need to make sure we know what it's doing and try to figure out its mission. Well, how do we know we don't have that type of thing over another country? Oh, yeah. Well, that's the you thing. Know? Well, that's why I brought up the X-37 because it's like yeah. we probably are doing exactly what they're probably doing to yeah. us. It's like, And what if they're not even doing it? What if we're just saying that to continue like a narrative? I mean, I don't know, obviously, but. Well, I think this all plays into this whole thing that space is now becoming a possible yeah. place for war yeah you people know? aren't noticing the big change in discussion around this type of stuff like yeah it's really happening they're it, talking about it everywhere yeah exactly and i mean hearing you know trump wanting to create the space force and you know we need to be the dominant force in space and this is becoming a huge issue because china and russia are are going to beat us in that space race if you know we don't really start taking it seriously like and I, I don't know I mean I don't want to be you know living in a country where you know we are defenseless you know yeah. if we're being attacked from outer space or something yeah. like you know I'm all for getting a space you know military force going things like that but you know I want transparency and disclosure mm -hmm. about things but obviously we probably won't get that but it is something that is sort of looming over all of our heads yeah and literally something we have to like <laughs> quite literally <laughs> seriously though that's freaky so I, just like another thing for me to worry about great yeah just mm -hmm. add that to your list of things to keep you up at night and mm -hmm. think about i have quite will a we list. be attacked from outer space by russia or china <laughs> oh, but and you can't sweat the small stuff all you gotta do is hit your zen pen yeah. and chill out. when you feel in a little anxiety ridden just 
puff that monk pen or they've got CBD vape pens now on uh, Biological Meds. So, all right, here's something else that will make <coughs> Sorry, you... Guys, I have like a little cold, so... I know, I keep, I need to get the cough button. We'll get yeah. the cough button for I just found out there's a cough button. I know. I, I, I could have used that many times. <laughs> I haven't been able to have the, the complete setup that I... <coughs> Wanted cause yeah, cause that's just like so I know, I'm everybody's so like, sorry, but what am I supposed to do? My ear? Because I can't talk. There's something in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> Choke to. it down. Just <laughs> suppress your cough. Don't cough. All right. Well, I don't. A... What I don't understand is even if I have a cough button, you're still gonna hear it through your mic. Well, right. I think it's worse in this room because there's kind of a little bit of an echo in here because it's oh. like. Kind well, of... one time I went over there in the corner and coughed, and you could hear it crystal clear, and I was like six feet away from the mics. <laughs> So. Well, then we're just fucked. So yeah, seems we're just fucked. <laughs> but we also might be fucked because Chinese bombers are training oh, for great. possible U.S. strikes. Yeah, I and saw this, this is on CNN according too. to a new Pentagon report that is also detailing how Beijing is transforming its ground forces to fight and win. Which China is a very large com our country. It is full of people and there, yeah. there's like 1.4 billion people dude there's 1.4 billion we have like three to 350 million yeah. so their army could be literally like as many people as in our country like ground oh, force that's wise. like really scary isn't it yeah and that's why the like, are we like screwed <laughs> well, I don't, I don't <laughs> ask me i don't know we might be screwed but mm -hmm. i mean we have to i mean this all comes back to you know hopefully we can get some leadership in position that's not gonna literally piss off everybody you know because mm -hmm. these guys are these guys are actually doing practice runs so earlier this month six chinese h6k bombers flew through the miyako strait in the southwest of the japanese islands and then for the first time turned north to fly east of okinawa where forty-seven thousand u.s troops are based the People's Liberation Army, so China's army, has demonstrated the capability to strike U.S. and allied forces and military bases in the Western Pacific Ocean, including Guam, the report says. And China is engaged in the decades-long buildup and modernization of its once completely depleted, you know, backwards armed forces. But now military leaders have a set a goal of fielding a world-class military by 2050. So they are ramping up. For what you know like why is everybody ramping That's up their so military scary, why are we trying to you know what if they like prepare all for up? like war oh like, that's freaky dude i don't even want to talk about this it's scary <laughs> so i mean here's the thing too then this was something i brought up to yeah. her when we were talking about this better, before yeah please? all right I, i'm sure some of you are freaking out and like oh my god the world is ending well <laughs> here here's a little truth truth bomb for you so there is also a possibility that this is sort of propaganda provided by the military industrial complex, which we've talked about yeah. on the podcast before, which means that there is a great possibility that they are trying to scare us, trying yes. to invoke this it's anxiety to scare us. in order for us to get behind, you know, politicians who are, are pushing for more military, more weapons, all that sort of thing, more military spending. So. To me personally, I'm not that worried about it because I know that a lot of this has to do with the military industrial complex. They don't, they want us to continue to kind of live in fear of a f World War III. I mean, that's the term that gets thrown around all the time. It's like, we got to be ready for World War III when it happens, like literally preparing for it. So it's, it's like they want this to happen. But at the end of the day, is it actually going to happen? No. I don't know, but I don't actually, because here's the thing. No. <laughs> Well, here's the thing, right? If let's just say there was a World War Three that happened or, or an incident happened where we attacked each other. Mm. Well, if China or Russia attacks us, we have bases all around the world. We have f armed forces everywhere. Yeah. We would hit them extremely so hard. hard, very, very quick. And honestly, the, it probably would go nuclear very quickly. Yeah. So it all comes yeah. back to this thing of like, Are if somebody really attacks do? somebody else, they're gonna get fucking attacked back and yeah, it's kind of like we're all living in this weird limbo where you're like no one can like really attack each other because it'd just be the end of the world It's like a standoff. Everybody's just like pointing their guns at each other. Just like don't move stay back stay back Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's what's happening here. So again We were all scared about North Korea. Look what happened with that, you know It's just like you got to take it with a little bit of like, you know 
they are they trying to make me scared about this? Are they over exaggerating? Are they the really trying They're leaving to leaving out part of the story? Right. Are they? Who knows what we've been doing to them? What's on their news? We don't know. Yeah, exactly. So, to me, that's what I think is going on with all that. So, you know, don't worry too much. You know, yeah. plus. Maybe the aliens will save us. So that's a good <laughs> ended on a good note. Actually, there's probably a good chance because if you didn't know, there's like all these instances of um, strange things happening when they're like testing nuclear bombs and stuff. Random like spacecraft showing UFO up. UFO events. Like, yeah. yeah, seriously, it's it's wild. Like even they don't, laser like, beams uh-uh. like like taking the top off the missiles and stuff. Yep. Like. So I like to think that there is some you know some other type of higher force energy. Aliens, whatever you want to call it, that is sort of making sure things keep going in the right direction. Obviously, that you know, Mother Nature does what Mother Nature wants to do. But as far as like humans destroying each other, I think you know we're good for now. At least might be a little naive to say, but but that's we're my good opinion. For now. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> but yeah, so let's let's talk about this before we get oh, into yes. uh, the criminal justice system. I wanted to start out with this because this has just been such a crazy story and yeah. such a tragic event that mm-hmm. happened. And for those that didn't haven't heard about this, which you know you may not if you were in another country or something. But well, let's start with Monday. It, it was on Monday. We saw it on the news before yeah. anything was out. Uh, just on our local news. We normally see the news sometimes before we watch Colbert. It's like recorded. Yeah, it's um, like the nightly local nightly news or whatever. Yeah, so I had a feeling that he did it like right away. Well, what happened for those that don't know what happened? And who are we talking about? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had already said that. No, no, you didn't. Okay, so Chris Watts, he's 33 years old and he's married to a woman named Shanann. It's not Shannon. Everyone keeps saying it wrong. Shannon Watts. And they had two little girls, Bella and Celeste. She was also pregnant with a child who's rumored to be a boy. I think the family confirmed it was going to be a boy named Miko. Miko, And basically, earlier this week on Monday, so what? She came. She was missing. She was out of the out of town somewhere. She just had gotten home from a business trip. Mm -hmm. And she works for this like Thrive company that does like weight loss, just like basically nutrients type stuff. Like it's like one of those companies though, that's like Mary Kay or I think it's called an MLM. They're like, I don't know where you have to like know someone to get the products and be part of like this tier of, it's It's kind of like like a a, Ponzi type thing. It's like a pyramid scheme almost. (laughs) It's not a scheme. It's not, it's not, it's a real legit thing. Yeah. Yeah. So the people at the top make the most. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So she, she She went missing. She went missing after Mm -hmm. getting home on Monday. Chris says he went to work that she came home around what, 2 a.m. And then he, he went, went to work at 515. Right. And he said that she was there when he left. Right. And then he got home or whatever. And he called her. She didn't. He said he called her three times and she didn't answer. If that was me, I would have called you 50,000 times. I would have driven to wherever I think you were and find you. Like, mm-hmm. I have so much anxiety. I can't imagine just like not being like, whatever. Um. So, yeah, then he got on the news. You know, made this big public plea to everyone, which um, you should watch it yeah, if you haven't seen. I'm it. actually going to play it because it's it's really telling. Just it's it's very. There's a lot of red flags that get raised when you hear it and when you watch it because mm-hmm. he literally to the cameras says like, "I don't know where they are. I don't know what happened to them. I just want them to come home. You know, I miss them." And yeah, literally, he ends up being the one responsible. Sorry, I'm having issues finding this. Um, but yeah, he finally confessed after he'd already like made this public thing. And um, well, that so the authorities like came and like started like searching his home. And it, became, it was like a missing persons case. Mm-hmm. And he was staying with a, a neighbor friend. And they actually said they like started noticing some weird. Yeah, he just wasn't like that concerned. Wasn't about concerned it. about wasn't it. Wasn't trying his hardest wasn't being to look. Proactive. Right. Yeah. Wasn't even interested in following up on like tips they were getting and stuff. Yeah. Um. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this video real fast. Yeah, it's it's just the craziest thing because he doesn't look like the kind of guy who would do this. And that's always like a thing in cases, you know, like, does this person look like they would commit this heinous crime? And oftentimes killers don't look like that. Um, so I think the whole community has just been really shocked. But here is the video of him kind of making a plea to uh, people. It's only 20 seconds. I just want them back. 
<laughs> I just I just want them to come back. And if if they're not safe right now, that's what's that's what's tearing me apart. Because if they are safe, they're coming back. But if they're not, this 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 has got to stop. Like somebody has to come forward. That what was the, the weirdest fuck shit. Was that? I think he probably saw his own video back and was like, "Oh God, I did a terrible job. I need to confess." He did not sell that at all. Like he's he's literally like arms crossed, rocking back and forth. Yeah. And he laughs at the beginning. Yeah, that is so weird. Which is so creepy and weird. And and now that you know, now that you know that he literally murdered his wife and his three mm -hmm. kids essentially, mm -hmm. and he's saying that like, I just want them to come home. Like it's like we've got a probably a psychopath on our hands. Oh here. yeah, I think so. Or a sociopath or or whatever. Yeah. And um so yeah, basically he told them I buried them and he used to work at a oil and gas company yeah, in Colorado. Yeah. So they're like up north of Denver. Like kind of near Greeley they're area. Like, yeah, they're like at least an hour away from us, north of us. And yeah, um, as far as but we yeah, we used to live up in that direction so we're familiar with mm -hmm. you know the oil gas business is really big up there and he worked at an oil um, on a like an oil drilling site for uh, this oil company and After he confessed he was like yeah, I, I murdered them and then I buried them mm -hmm. um, Or told the investigators where he had hid the bodies and yeah, unfortunately, that's where they then went and they un you know recovered uh, his wife Shanann's body in a shallow grave on the actual company mm -hmm. land which he got fired obviously like, Yeah, he got fired that Wednesday. Day. Yeah which um, I wonder what happened with that exactly, how that went down. Oh, I'm sure they just got contacted by police. Like, hey, we have reason to believe there's three bodies on your yeah, property right yeah, now. Yeah, that's you're right. And it took a while to recover uh, the girls, which is so sad because he left them in an oil tank. And from updates that I've seen, we're kind of waiting for information right now. There's supposed to be a lot coming out today. Unfortunately, we can't wait that long. But um, we believe, they believe that the girls were put in an oil tank and left there for possibly even four days before so, she got home from her business yeah, trip. That's he, what they think. He killed the kids when she was gone. She got home, freaked out. He killed her. God, yeah. that's just so. Oh. I know. It's just so hard to wrap your head around. Like as it a is. parent, like. I mean, can't I'm not imagine. a parent, so I can't even but you're possibly a parent to a dog even and like we would never do that to our dogs. This is their child. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. The daughters were uh, Bella, who's four and Celeste was three years old and they were strangled and uh, yeah, put in the oil tank for four days. So sad, man. So they are actually trying to um, the defense are requesting that the girls next be swabbed for DNA evidence. And uh, they're trying to take samples from the nails as well and Shanann's nails, but a judge denied these requests So they're I don't know what the what their play is gonna be I think here. They think that he strangled them um, because She also had um Like he had scratch marks on his neck. You can see in the interview. You can see them There's like all these red marks on his neck. It looks like she fought back against him. So no, it's just terrible. Man. It is. It's, it's absolutely so terrible. Sickening. It's terrible, you know. And I think I think if you want to talk about motive with this, yeah, there's you know we don't know for sure what investigators mm -hmm. are thinking, but they were um, in bankruptcy. Yep, they were out of money. Mm -hmm. You know, and it sounds like there may have been infidelity or something. Yeah, so it's just, hard to confirm any of that right now, but there's like I said in the next week I'm sure there'll be so much more, but this is definitely I think a case to follow um, Yeah, yeah, so if you're wondering though, it's it, one thing that was interesting about this case is he's not being charged for his unborn child Which is unique to Colorado. There's like a special law that doesn't allow you to charge them and why they would want to charge him is because they're probably seeking the death penalty is my guess and three counts will work will help them more than or four counts would you know convince a jury yeah. more than three would so that's kind of been this big debate and there's people doing petitions and stuff So I was kind of curious about your guys's opinion on that Should you be charged for an unborn child? Yeah, yeah Well, I I think so. I think, I think so. so too I mean, this is especially just especially when a, you know that the child is there and this was obviously premeditated like this is like murder in its you know purest form evil in its purest form so yeah We'll see what happens with that, but obviously, you know, thoughts and, you know, prayers go out to the family of this horrible tragedy because I can't even imagine dealing with this or, mm -hmm. 
being anywhere involved with this, you know, whether you knew him or not. I mean, it's just, it's very sad. So Mm -hmm. definitely, definitely keep, keep them in mind, but let's get into the criminal justice system, which you guys are going to just be completely, I think, blown away by just how crazy uh, the, the system is. And, and it's interesting for us to talk about since we talk about criminals a lot. We talk about jail and right, sentences. Right. So well, that's it's the thing. kind of interesting to look at from that perspective, you know? No, absolutely. I mean, that's why we wanted to do this episode is because we do talk about a lot of true crime and we've covered some cases where we're like, you know, could go either way, but, you know, did he deserve to get locked up for that? You know, and like, we're going to talk, go into more in depth on that today mm-hmm. because I think it's important to actually look at the way that it's working, you know, is justice actually being served? Like, are people getting the justice they deserve? Are people not getting justice? Are people literally getting locked up for no reason and, Mm -hmm. you know, or being put to death for no reason? So we're going to look at all these different things today. But before we hop in, we teamed up with HelloFresh, and they are offering all of you guys a total of $60 off that's $20 off your first three boxes when you go to HelloFresh.com slash MileHire60 and use the offer code MileHire60. So if you don't know what HelloFresh is, HelloFresh wants to change the way people eat forever. HelloFresh believes everyone deserves honest, natural, delicious, and healthy food. HelloFresh celebrates fresh ingredients and making magic in the kitchen. They know there's a chef in all of us, and they think it's... Uh, Food brings people together, and good food allows us to live long, and great food lets us enjoy every bite of life. HelloFresh is learning and growing every day and never gives up and tries to make people happy. And we we uh, we actually used HelloFresh long before um, they came along to sponsor us. Yeah, and we're we, customers. We are customers. So I always, like, I always like sponsorships where we're actually like fans of the products and we yeah. use them beforehand mm-hmm. before we promote them. Mm-hmm. But... HelloFresh is great because everything comes pre-measured in labeled meal kits, so you always know which ingredients go with which recipe. It's got nice, big instructions, very easy to follow. Yeah, they've like got hard stock too, yeah. so they're not gonna get wet and like crinkly. Yeah, it's not counter. like a piece of paper or something yeah. crappy. You and can save them and have them as a recipe, which is yeah. nice. Yeah, exactly. That's what they want you to do, really. And they actually have three different plans you can choose from. They've got the classic plan, which comes in two or four servings. There's a veggie plan, so if you're vegetarian. Um, you can go with that plan. And then there's a family plan for those that have four plus people. They, they have a plan for everybody and they actually sent us meals, which Mm -hmm. yesterday we made the salsa verde enchiladas, which were bomb AF. They were black bean enchiladas. They were so good. Black beans are like my favorite ever. They were very delicious as Mm -hmm. you, as you can see there. And if you can't see, they were very good. Yeah. (laughs) Very good. They were. So they HelloFresh wants to make it so easy to cook delicious balance filling dinners for less than ten dollars a meal plus they ship it for free right to your door and you can skip a week if you want to skip a week it's very convenient and you can always feel confident with the simple recipes outlined in the step-by-step instruction card so go to hellofresh.com slash milehire60 and use the code milehire60 to get a total of sixty dollars off twenty dollars off your first three boxes so definitely check that out all right Let's fucking get into it, all right? So the criminal justice system today is literally like a bicycle stuck in one gear, the prison gear. Mm -hmm. And something we're going to talk about today is the prison industrial complex, essentially. There is a prison complex that exists today, which has literally created this prison culture in a way. Because the United States is the world's leader in in incarceration, which is not that surprising. Mm-mm. But today, close to 2.3 million Americans are incarcerated. According to the nonpartisan prison policy initiative, more than 1.3 million Americans are imprisoned in state correctional facilities. 615,000 are in local jails. 225,000 are in federal prisons or jails. And this figure also includes 48,000 kids who are currently in juvenile detention facilities. And this also means there's probably a lot of our viewers out there who have been to jail, have someone they love in jail, or know someone know who's somebody? went yeah. to jail, has experienced writing letters with people. Um, so this is probably like pretty emotional for people. Yeah, or just like to. I think all of us have probably at least 
had a taste of the criminal justice system. I mean, yeah. just just getting <laughs> pulled over by a police officer. I've been pulled over so <laughs> many times. I don't know if I've ever told this on here, have I? No, you should tell everybody. <laughs> just real fast. Yeah. So basically, when I was in high school, I drove a car that like I had like seniors written on the back, and I had, you always like, think that this is why. I think I it's why. It's, I don't is... know. I was targeted so much. Anyway, I was not good at like doing the full stop where all four wheels like jerk back. Which and, who is? Yeah, like seriously, I slowed down. I completely stopped. Look both ways. Like no, you know. It's but not anyway, like you were, I got like, nailed by stuff. like five cops in a year for the same thing. <laughs> Which like, I was old, with you. It was <laughs> yeah. You were with me with the last one where I really. <laughs> that's where I lost my license. Um, but I've had all kinds of crazy things with the the police. Um, I mean, I think I deserved the the to lose my license. I needed to learn to be more vigilant. Like I have ADHD. I wasn't, you know, I was rushing to school every time that this happened. So I like needed it. And I went to a really great like defensive driving course because of it. And I learned a lot and everyone was in there for like DUIs and stuff. And I was like, this is what I don't want to be like dealing with. That's stressful. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. And then like what, like two years ago, I was driving downtown and I put on my blinker to get in the right lane and I started going over and then I realized that there was a police officer kind of like that had pulled up right behind the other car. So I'd be sort of cutting them off. So I quickly corrected myself, like didn't even get two wheels over the lane, maybe one. Corrected myself, went back and was like, oh, shoot. And then when I saw it was a police officer, she literally got behind me, pulled me over. And I was like, so what are you like giving me a ticket for? Yeah, I didn't actually do anything. Yeah. I almost made a mistake and then I didn't make the mistake. So like, are you getting me for like almost making a mistake? And yeah, they it was some bullshit. I had to go to court. Oh my god. Yeah. So I hate driving. Like Josh drives us everywhere. I literally avoid driving at all costs. We only have one car for that reason. <laughs> I hate driving because of that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I haven't had always the best experience, but I also have had some great experience with police officers. And I think we need to make sure that we we understand that in this episode. We are not attacking police no or anybody in the criminal justice system for that matter because it's a much bigger problem than any one individual right i just want people to know like we don't have anything against the police we actually both know a lot of police officers that we really care about and well yeah and i think i think we might have mentioned this before but both of us like just you know from a very young age have been fascinated with crime and Mm -hmm. you know criminal justice and things like that so much so that for me personally I, that was like the major in high school that I was I was like, I'm gonna go get my criminal justice degree I'm gonna go into law enforcement. I was obsessed with like the FBI and you know I wanted to be like a secret agent or you know work for the Secret Service or something and So I was really into it. I actually was in a program called the Explorer program It was actually the Aurora Police Explorer program, which is basically a, It's a great program actually they have it for firefighters too for kids that want to explore a career and see what it's really like and get a really good taste for you know what being of cop is all about Mm -hmm. and things like that so i actually did that for a few years Mm -hmm. and you know i had to go to a like a little uh training um i thought it was really hot when i met you (laughs) man in uniform yeah you did have a little (laughs) uniform and everything i did i did yeah it's pretty cool but yeah i mean i literally went to like a mini version of um you know what cops go through before they hit the streets and start patrolling and stuff and yeah. i learned all sorts of things yeah. investigative things so, so we both have a lot of respect for police officers we do you know? and i've i've known a lot of great ones i've also seen a lot of shitty ones yeah. as well um but and we have to be able to call out the shitty ones why there shouldn't be this weird thing where you can't say any you can't like point out flaws in the system without like seeming like you hate the police like that's so over dramatic most of us understand that police keep us safe we need them we respect them but there's some issues just like in any field that's just how well, it that's is. the thing right i mean it's a job at the end of the day it's how they're paying their bills just like we all have jobs that pay our bills so it shouldn't yeah. be treated you know we shouldn't have be right attacked for criticizing you know People that yeah. do a shitty job. We're, they're you know? essentially, you know, we pay our taxes, so we should have a say in what happens. Um, dude, I just remembered one other time I got pulled over. This is funny. <laughs> one time I got pulled over for looking at a quarter. Oh, yeah. Do you this remember was, that? Oh, my God. I couldn't believe this. <laughs> I was driving home from class, and as I was walking out of class, I had my phone in my backpack. And I even remember thinking, like, I'm not going to get it on my phone until I get home because I just, like, I don't know, wanted to kind of like disconnect for a second. I do this kind of stuff all the time. Put it in my bag, put it in the back seat. So I didn't have my phone with me and I'm driving and in my cup holder, there was a bunch of quarters and I'm sitting at a red light and I was just bored. So I picked up a quarter (laughs) 
and I'm looking at this quarter and it's like a new, you know, one of yeah, the new state yeah. quarters. So I was checking it out and this cop turned on his fucking lights behind me, pulled me over and he's like, hey, are you texting and driving? I saw you texting and driving. And I was like, uh, are you talking like I have a quarter? That's all I can think of. My phone's in the I back. Know, I couldn't believe check this. It. I was like, what the hell? And he's like, oh, OK, sorry. Bye. I was like, dude, I'm sitting at a red light. I'm allowed to look at a quarter like. <laughs> so Here's that, the thing, yeah. like, <laughs> I mean, that's just like you've had a lot of of experiences with police where you, you know, obviously like like you've just dealt one. with some like not so great police officers. Like, can I tell this last story? Yeah. I really want to share this sure. because this was so fucking disappointing to me. Probably the worst oh, thing yeah. I've ever experienced with police. So when I was a senior in college, I went to this party. Anyway, I got trashed at this party. Like, me and my friend split a bottle of vodka, and I never went out. I don't drink much at all. So I was just super nervous to be around all these frat guys I didn't know, and Josh wasn't there, so I got super drunk. And then we were going to this other frat party, and when we came up to the party, it was already being busted. Uh, or people were, like, running out of it. I don't even know. Police weren't there yet, but people were running, clearing the party. Mm -hmm. And there was this girl that was unconscious on the sidewalk of this oh, fraternity house man. and me and all my friends pull up and i'm like okay i'm the only one who's 21 here everyone else like get out of here go and um i helped this girl so i was literally alone with this girl drunk as hell let me tell you and yeah. she her eyes were rolling back in her head she was having like a full-on she could barely talk and so i had this girl in my arms and the president of the fraternity is just standing on the porch, by oh, the way. Oh, yeah, this was just so watching disappointing. Me. So disappointing. Just fucking watching me. So anyway, I called 911. Police come there, EMS come there. And I came up to them and I talked to them. And I was like, yeah, she's like really struggling, whatever. And they're like, okay, well, you need to have someone come pick you up right now or we're going to take you to detox. <laughs> they weren't nice to me at all. Like, no thank you for being the one that stayed behind out of probably 75 people yeah. and helped this girl. Yeah. And I got, they were mean to me. They were so mean to me. I had to like have someone come pick me up. I was so disappointed. Like, try to do the right thing. I know? mean, you were very, very lit for sure. I was but, lit. I was sobbing after but, all this. But yeah, happened. I mean, you were super emotional. <laughs> you literally thought this girl had died. I thought she did die in my arms. I really you thought did. she no, died you, in my arms. You, swear to God. I, I've never seen you so hysterically like just beside yourself like literally like i i believe i was like yeah did this girl like really die because you seemed like yeah so upset you were so worried like you're you just kept saying like you know is she okay is she okay like yeah. you it bothered you so much and i was like damn this girl must have been in really tough shape. dude you have no idea her eyes were completely rolled back in her head she was a freshman it was like first couple weeks of school Fucking i felt so sorry bad. i i fraternities are just they, well, it's like, why are none to, of you here to help? Like, terrible. there's all yes. these, there's supposed to be and, gentlemen in the fraternities. Yeah, That's what seriously. we're taught. Like, in sororities, I was taught to about values and personal growth. And, like, I would never Take leave someone there. Take care of, like, there. your brothers and sisters. Yes. I didn't even know this girl. <laughs> I never even met her. I've never talked to her, actually. She doesn't even, probably doesn't even know this happened and that she was in my arms at one point. But it was, yeah, it was very disappointing the way the police handle it in the fraternities. Yeah. <laughs> Man, am I glad to be out of college. That's all I got to say. Yeah. But yeah, no. I've had like at least, what, like eight bad run-ins with police. Yeah, and it I'm seems a really like you good have, person. I know. It I never seems do like anything wrong. Haven't... I was so straight-laced in my all of high school and yeah. Yeah, no, your I've your encounters luck. have been not great for sure. No. And not I'm always so lucky. nice to them and like just hoping they'll just be nice to me back. No. <laughs> <laughs> they're like one look and, at a record. They're like, nope. Not to mention, sorry guys, I'm just kind of going off, but like. I also went on a police ride along when I was in high school and the dudes were totally racist. I'm sorry. The policemen I was with were saying like fucked up things. And I was a senior in high school and I even knew how bad it was. Like they were saying such nasty, nasty things. We went to the projects. They were making fun of people in the projects. I was like, dude, way to ruin this experience for me. Like I was so excited. To, I've always been invest, you know, interested in this kind of stuff. So taking a law class and doing a ride along. Yeah. Was which really is surprising, exciting. honestly, that they yeah. weren't on their best behavior for oh, it was crazy. the was ride shocked. along. Cause that's terrible. They were calling Obama the N word in front of me. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I'm like a little girl from high mm. school. Like, yeah. So that like ruined my, you've yeah. had really bad experiences had then. Damn. Experiences, but I've also had good ones. I had a dude live, lived across the street from me. He was a police officer. He was like the nicest guy in the world. And there's also been, you know, we know some other great cops. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. 
America makes up 4% of the world's population total, but it also makes up 25% of the world's incarcerated. And on top of the 2.3 million Americans who are incarcerated, 3.7 million are on probation and 847,000, 840,000, sorry, are on parole. It has since 1970, the inmate population has risen 700% and growing. So basically, <laughs> since the 70s, like thousands, like thousands and thousands and thousands of pe people have been locked up in America's prison system. Mm -hmm. Which there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of different things that can influence this. There's changes in law and policy that could explain most of the increase. There's, uh, and the results of this are overcrowding in prisons. Fiscal burdens on states despite increasing evidence that large-scale incarceration is not an effective means of achieving public safety. The prison system in the U.S. costs $75 billion a year. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. It's a $75 billion industry. Maybe people wouldn't want people to be locked up as much if they knew how much they're paying for their you know, tax dollars. Yeah. Well, we'll get into that some more here. Not only that, but there's actually two, uh, roughly two million prisoners currently behind bars who have never even had a trial yet. That's sick. That's that's like so, so unconstitutional and wrong. It is. I mean, literally, the Sixth Amendment states in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed, which district shall have been previously ascertained by law and to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation, to be confronted with the witnesses against him, to have a compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor, and to have the assistance of counsel for his defense." That sounds pretty good, but when you look at the reality of things, this is not what happens in mo I'm going to say most because it really feels like most. It really feels like it's it's the the criminal justice system meaning the prosecution, the state and all of its resources and the prison system behind them against little old you, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Even if you have a good defense team as we've seen with the staircase and Michael Peterson and mm -hmm. you look at Mm -hmm. You look at OJ, you look at all these different cases where actually OJ was a yeah. rare example of a success uh, when it comes to a, you know, a defense being able to actually defend you from the state. But when you clearly did it. Right. But it just goes to show that something is seriously wrong here. If literally our, you know, a Sixth Amendment is not even happening most of the time. Yeah. So do you think that like maybe that these two million people, the reason that they haven't had a trial is because they don't think they could win a trial? Like they think there's not enough evidence that they did whatever they're in there for and they think could that be. a jury would like let them go? Could be. Here, let me let me read this because this plays into that and this is interesting. So this is from an award-winning journalist named Chris Hedges and he said, the reality is that almost no one who is in prison in America has gotten a trial. There is rarely an impartial investigation, a staggering 97% of all federal cases and 95% of all state felony cases are resolved through plea bargaining. Of those millions who are bargained away their right to a trial by accepting plea deals, significant percentages of them are innocent. Right? Because that, that happens a lot. I think it happens more than people even like to believe. Like, it is hard to get a trial. Yeah. It takes a long time to go to trial. So a lot of people go the, the plea bargain route and the plea bargaining route doesn't always does usually doesn't end up well for you because you literally have to plea, plea guilty mm -hmm. to the crime for a lesser sentence or lesser punishment. But you end up in the prison system and you might even be innocent. Like we've seen that so many times, too, where people are literally locked in prison for years because that the state was like, we have enough evidence to take this trial, we, and we think we can, you know, basically convict you. And you may not even have did the crime, but you're like, what do I do? Should I should I take that chance? Go to trial? Go in possibly front of a jury? Get a worse, and in, yeah, yeah, possibly get a worse sentence, worse punishment, or do I take the plea? But know. you, st either way, you still end up in the fucking system. Mm -hmm. 
And special and if you're innocent, the system will completely destroy you physically, mentally, spiritually, in every way. I mean, Kendall and I have been, you know, we've watched a lot of true crime documentaries, a lot of true crime shows, some of our, you know, top ones and ones that have been most eye opening for me by yeah. far has been sixty days in on A and E where ordinary people who've never been in prison or jail get locked up in jail for 60 days it's basically like they sign up to be undercover in a prison and kind of let them know who's bringing in drugs who's you know what the problems where, yeah, are where, where they the can problems are they having issues with the, the wardens staff. yeah um wardens is that even a there's warden? one warden okay <laughs> i don't know why that sounds like country western so like, to the <laughs> warden it is kind of, it kind of stems from that, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, but like the correctional officers, things like that. But they're just normal people that do it. It's it's wild what they go through too. Like it's very eye opening to how prison is. Um, because it's we also scary. watch Orange Is the New Black, and we love that show. But it's like very unrealistic for how most prisons are. Mm -hmm. Like that's probably a pretty good prison. Oh yeah, you know? and I mean there are. That's the thing too is there Compared. are better prisons than others for sure like there's better situations Yes, but like most county jails are a complete shit show literally yeah. a shit show. Yeah, and just like <laughs> degrading. It's, it's horrible. It's it's equating to Animals animals in cages, you know, like mm -hmm. we you know all of us want animals to be able to roam free and stuff Obviously, these are criminals, but it's like when does it become inhumane is solitary confinement a form of torture like is that is that a something that should even be used today still? Well, I knowing think it depends. What it does. I think some people need to be in solitary confinement. But there's way too many people that are right. in there. Well, like, that's it, the thing. And it and shouldn't long. be for nonviolent stuff. And for years, people yeah. are in solitary confinement for years. Yeah. That's crazy. Years. Even but I mean, some of them, though, have like killed inmates, fellow inmates, or like attacked Right, so it's guards. like, what other you choice do they them. have? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. what other choice do you have? Yeah, so like some of them need this we're talking about the majority right that doesn't deserve population. you know the non-violent criminals too right yeah well that's the whole thing right like chris watts like he yeah. deserves justice he deserves a harsh sentence and punishment yes. because and i'd be fine with him sitting in solitary you know, confinement. we're gonna find him guilty of of this horrific crime that he committed right but like you just said non-violent offenders get treated the same as violent offenders yeah. most of the time yeah. and they get they live Especially together. Drug, it's not like they separate events. the violent people all the time no. from the nonviolent. Like you could be a drug dealer and, <laughs> you know, yeah. you're with somebody that's literally like murdered a bunch of yeah. people or assaulted a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem with the system here. And that's what we're going to talk about. So if you look at the incarceration rates internationally, the United States just leads it by a long shot. Really far. 670. Uh, Per 100,000 when it comes to people being incarcerated second is actually North Korea which that number is very high too Because we don't actually know for sure But when we go look at you know where a lot of you guys are from across the world look at like Australia They're 167 versus 670 way <laughs> way less Canada even less 114 go all the way down to you know Sweden at 57. Yeah, that's crazy so very very low so we are like 700% more likely to lock somebody up than people in you know India is the lowest Europe. That's interesting. I mm -hmm. thought they would have been higher, but maybe not So why did this happen? Why did we have this huge increase from the 70s to now of people being incarcerated? And there's a lot of different theories to this one is a series of law enforcement and sentencing policy changes of the tough on crime era resulted in a dramatic growth in mm. incarceration, which is true and yes. was brought up. I think Nixon was probably mm -hmm. one of them. And also because the war on drugs, which started in 1982, and the number of people incarcerated for drug offenses in the U.S. skyrocketed from 40,900 in 1980 to 450,345 in 2016. It was Nixon that started the war on drugs. Yep. He was such a fuckhead. Sorry. <laughs> and and for me, this is my biggest issue with the whole system is drug related offenses. Mm -hmm. Me too. I drug related offense. Me personally, I don't think we should be throwing people that are addicted to drugs into prison because as many of us know, 
it ain't drug free in prison. There's drugs in prison. There's tons and tons of drugs. Some have even said, like in one of the 60 Days In episodes in the Atlanta uh, jail, they're like, there's more drugs in here than there is on the streets. Like, yeah, they're yeah. literally like doing cocaine and doing all these different types of hardcore drugs. So it makes it really hard because a lot of people are like, get addicts off the street, get them in jail right. so that they don't have their drugs and they right. can get they clean can get while clean. they're in jail. That's not reality at all. No. Like, if anything, it makes their addictions worse because that's all they have to do. And, you know, when you're trying to get off of especially opioids or, mm -hmm. you know, heroin or something really strong like that. And we've ha we've both like have had uh, like a very close up experience with someone going through this yes. with people going through this. So like we're very familiar with what it's like to have addiction, how and hard it is. Yes. It is a real disease. Mm -hmm. It has to be treated as such. Right. And you don't get the treatment that you need in prison. You no. just don't. It's not rehabilitating people at all. No, absolutely not. There's actually more people behind bars for drug offenses than the number of people who were in prison or jail for any crime in 1980. That's so insanity. a mass majority of the people in this overall number of incarcerated is drug related offenses. So is there a possibility for major reform when it comes to dealing with drug related offenses obviously a huge one is marijuana which we'll talk more about than specific numbers yeah, that's in that my situation major problem. later is like people are getting locked up for years for life for a plant for it's a fucking ridiculous. plant ridiculous that doesn't kill anybody just and it plant. doesn't and don't try to come and say oh it does because it doesn't it doesn't at, as, there's no at least from like overdose no it doesn't there's no proof that can't of, smoke yourself to death. No, you can't even overdose on it. No, without extreme amounts. Yeah, you can overdose on some plants, though. Kind of. <sighs> it's crazy. Essential oils. <laughs> so not only did we, you know, start locking people up for drug offenses, but we also started sending people to prison for much longer terms. And this all happened during that 1980 time period till now. Harsh sentencing laws like mandatory minimums combined with cutbacks and parole release keep people in prison for longer periods of time than ever before. The National Research Council reported that half of the 222% growth in the state prison population between 1980 and 2010 was due to an increase of time served in prison for all offenses. And there has also been a historic rise in the use of life sentences, one in nine people in prison is now serving a life sentence, nearly a third of whom are sentenced to life without parole. You know what Josh and I were talking about, too, is like, obviously, some people deserve to be locked up for their whole life and need to be. But how it's just thrown out so easily to people who maybe don't deserve that. It's so alarming how easily we take away everything someone has. All you have when you're born into this world is your life and your freedom. That's it. To take that away from someone for their entire life and not even give them the ability to work towards becoming right, better right. is really, really sad to me. Literally um, locking you up and throwing the key away mm -hmm. and then taking you out when you die, like once mm -hmm. you're dead. And there's plenty of people who, have, who are not killers that are in this situation, you know? And there's innocent people that are literally on death row yeah, that have been convicted for crimes they did not con convict Commit. that... I mean, if, when you look back and you just think about all the people that have likely been executed because or, you know, due to being wrongly convicted and, and oh, sentenced to death is like crazy when they're innocent. Like it's pro it would probably blow our minds if we even knew what that number was. Yeah. And, and that's interesting because I'm actually about to record a video today on uh, Lacey Peterson. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's a good example. Yeah. And uh, it's pretty crazy just thinking about it because I'm like. I'm pretty fucking sure Scott Peterson killed Lacey Peterson. Um, but he's on death row and there's a slight, there's like 10% of me that thinks he may not have done it because there's a pretty good alternative scenario that does make sense. And there's some evidence for, and it's like, ugh, how do you decide it's it's well, someone's it's like, life? Like you could anybody be wrong. Have, yeah. We're probably right, but we could be wrong. Well, it's almost makes me think is like, maybe they should only be able to give, you know, give the death penalty if there is, 100% proof without a you know without a reason but like that they did it mm -hmm. and only then but then again it's it opens this whole other debate like should we even be executing people still in the first place like is yeah. this something that we should even be doing 
Well, I don't know. That See, that's the thing is like I've never been able to form a, f- a full opinion on the death penalty. I'm completely mixed on it because I study some crazy crimes, dude. And there's some people that I, I want them to fucking die because of what they did mm-hmm. is so heinous to like little girls or chill. Like I just can't picture anything else happening with them but at the same time i've now learned that people on death row actually get treated a lot better yeah it takes a very long time if it even happens before you just die naturally so it's almost like is that worse or is it almost better for them like is it worse to sit in a prison cell for your whole life and just think about what you did like that would be the worst if it was me i'd probably rather just die Instead of just sitting there thinking about how shitty I am for the rest right. of my life. Right. Um, but it's interesting how, I don't know, because then you also think about it's expensive to keep them in there. Think of the amount that we're it's paying. It's very expensive. So is it, hundreds but you of can't just let dollars. them go. Right. So what do you do with them? Right. So it's, ship it's just them a off giant an circle where I can't, them... can't figure out exactly where I stand on that. It's hard. It's just, it's so complex. And like, there's a lot of people that are like, well, they don't. You know, they don't even execute people humanely like they 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 still haven't even figured out what's the yeah, right drug freaky. to inject, you know, death yeah. by injection. Like, tell, tell us about that. You told me about that. The other day. So Freaking they out. just started doing fentanyl using fentanyl to essentially kill you with it because it actually does work very quickly at high dosages. So they are starting to do that. But in the past, there's like literally people that have been like injected with you know concoctions of different drugs and things like that that end up surviving the execution oh my god and don't actually die but undergo like horrific pain like basically torture by the state so looking at it from that perspective it's like they're literally like torturing people so is that okay too like because that person does you know because like here's the thing right it all comes back to like us as humans and as a human being, we all make mistakes. We all fuck up. We all, you know, we all have a bad day or in a, you know, mm-hmm. in the wrong place at the wrong time. And, you know, a mat, you know, if you're somebody that's a, you know, innocent and on death row, I wouldn't want that want that to happen to me. Plus, do you believe in redemption? Do you think people, no matter how messed up you are, what crimes you commit? Do you think everybody has that ability to come back? Like, and I think I rehabilitate if it was if the system re actually had a rehabilitation process. Would right. you be open to taking the death penalty off the table in order to enter them into like a serious rehabilitation program? I think if you're sentenced to death row, you should be able to work towards uh, being taken off dead death row and back into life in prison to prove that you could be a helpful person in the prison or that you've changed of course i believe in redemption and forgiveness i believe i mean there's many victims out there who've even you know forgiven the craziest killers because it's bet it's better to forgive right but not forget and i don't think that they should be let out you know like if you take someone's life, especially if you tortured someone or did something like that, I think you deserve to be in life in prison. Absolutely. Sure. Sure. If not the death penalty, like sure. that's where I'm just like, I've seen some shit where I think people should be given the death penalty. So it's so hard for me to fully decide like Fred and Rose West. Did they, did they ever get the death penalty or anything? I think they both just died in jail, mm-hmm. but yeah, like them sickos. Yeah. Well that, I mean, that's the thing here. And, and, the death penalty has been ar- around since like the beginning of of human civilization. I mean, yeah. we've been executing right. you know criminals for years. So it's, it's like maybe that's like literally necessary in order to sort of keep this balance between good and evil and yeah. you know the criminals versus the the rest of society. Like you have to like you got to have a harsh punishment yeah. in place in order to help deter people from cuz like what right. if criminals knew that the worst they're going to get is like a rehabilitation program. So they just go fucking like, yeah, mask, like you know, yeah. go do a bunch of horrible, heinous shit. Right. And they're like, you know, that's why it's hard. Right. And easy. So it's like it's very it's, it's very, very tough. Complex. It's very tough. So it really just seems like a case to case thing when it comes down to it. So this it shouldn't be the system doesn't work right for every case mm-hmm. is the thing. No, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. And it especially doesn't work very well for people of different ethnicities and different racial backgrounds. It does not touch all communities equally. 
Sentencing policies, implicit racial bias, and socioeconomic inequity contribute to racial disparities at every level of the criminal justice system. Today, people of color make up 37% of the U.S. population, but 67% of the prison population, 67% is not white. That's insanity. It is. It is very lopsided. Yeah, it is. Overall, African Americans are more likely than white Americans to be arrested. Mm -hmm. Once arrested, they are more likely to be convicted. And once convicted, they are more likely to face stiff sentences. This is fact, guys. This is yeah. not, this is not this just not opinion. like opinions of, you know. It's modern day slavery in literally. a lot of ways. I mean, literally. I mean, black men are six times as likely to be incarcerated as white men. And Hispanic men are more than twice as likely to be incarcerated as non-Hispanic white men. That is very alarming yes and it, i mean this this whole problem is far deeper rooted than just the criminal justice system being fucked up i mean this goes back to racism in america it goes way way back and this is a major culture problem that we've got on our hands but the criminal justice system definitely does not work in the favor of all all no. people by any means not even close so what does Mass incarceration and public safety have to do together. So crime rates have declined substantially since the early 1990s, but studies suggest that rising imprisonment has not played a major role in this trend. The National Research Council concluded that while prison growth was a factor in reducing crime, the magnitude of the crime reduction remains highly uncertain, and the evidence suggests it was unlikely to have been large. Several factors explain why this impact was relatively modest. First, incarceration is particularly ineffective at reducing certain kinds of crimes, in particular youth crimes, many of which are committed in groups and drug crimes. When people get locked up for these types of offenses, they're easily replaced on the streets by others seeking an income or struggling with addiction. Second, people tend to age out of crime. Research shows that crime starts to peak in the mid to late teenage years and begins to decline when individuals are in their mid-20s. After that, the crime drops sharply as adults reach their 30s and 40s which is interesting that it's like this window of like your teenage years to around like the 30s that you're most susceptible um you see most of the crime the national research council also or the their recent study concludes that because recidivism which is reoffending rates decline with age lengthy prison sentences unless specifically target very high rate or extreme dangerous offenders are an inefficient approach to preventing crime. The recidivism rate for American prisoners is 77% within five years of being released. According to the Bureau of Justice Statistics, roughly 39% of these rearrests were for drug offenses, 38% were for property offenses, and 29% for, were for violent offenses. So basically this is just saying that is incarceration even a good like does it actually deter crime does it actually keep people from recommitting crimes no <laughs> no clearly it doesn't i mean especially i mean especially for the drug related stuff yeah yeah you here's the thing i mean if you're addicted to drugs you're gonna you know yeah. even when you get released from prison you're you know you might relapse and go you know keep continue the struggle or the only people that they really know in their life their friends and family are using drugs right. so they're going right back into it yeah or right, exactly. they don't know any other means to support themselves they just and there's they not just fall back in or they come out of jail completely addicted still like yeah. not worse yeah. or people who went in there without being addicted came out addicted you know yep, what i mean exactly no that happens too it's wild because here, here's the reality the reality is is like if you go to prison and you spend any amount of time in prison, especially if you spend years in prison, you come out, it is not, and you have nothing. It is very, very hard to get going again. You can't get a job most mm -hmm. of the time. You can't get a job. If you get a job, it's a very low paying, you know, job, but you have no access to government benefits. You can't get welfare. Um, you can't get food stamps. Mm -hmm. And that's why so many inmates, um, after being released, end up homeless. Yeah. There's a homeless or problem. they just want to go back in or they just want to go it's back in and it structure. actually makes them want to commit more crimes or they right. feel like they have to, to in order to survive. In. Yeah, there's right. no help no. for that transition no. or preparation as we see in this shows like 
it's chaos. It's absolute yeah, chaos. It yeah, to the point where like the <laughs> whole jail is flooding with water. There's inmates everywhere. There's girls. Nobody's watching anybody. There's, oh, yeah. It's literally just a free for all. People yeah. are pissed off. They don't. They get to see the light of day like two hours, three hours a day. If they got that, nothing to do. That's like lucky if you see it two yeah. to three hours a day. I feel like most of them it's like maybe an hour if that. That's like people that are uh, like solitary confinement and stuff. They oh. have to like I think by law they have to like get you outside. And, like, well, that's good. But but it's still it's not that good. I mean, the yeah. main thing is like they got nothing to do. So all they got to do is think about what they did. Yeah. Start shit with other inmates. Yep. Or like, you know. Do drugs. Exactly. So <laughs> what is it doing? Nothing. It's not re rehabilitating at all. It's just a band-aid. It's like taking a person that's bothering right. us and putting it in a little drawer. A box. And shutting like, it. Right, yeah. Stay in this box. Yep. Can't come out. Mm -hmm. And what's crazy to me is like so many people that are in prison have no idea like about their case or what's going on no. or when they're going to be released or any. Like, they can't get any answers. No either. information. COs don't help. With something as serious as incarcerating someone, taking away everything they have, you would think the system would work a little better as far as answering their fucking questions and like treating them with respect and giving them their constitutional rights. Yeah. You would think. You would think. <laughs> you would think. But things really haven't got that much better, unfortunately. And I mean, there has been some reform at the state level, actually, California voters passed a ballot measure, Proposition 47 in 2014, which reclassified certain low-level property and drug crimes from felonies to misdemeanors and will reinvest some of the fiscal savings into prevention programs. New York policymakers reformed the Rockefeller drug laws in 2009, which imposed harsh mandatory minimum sentences for low-level drug offenses. Fucking so there's a well, that's the thing. There's a lot of laws and things still in place from the war on drugs that are locking up people for like literally just having possessing like a small amount of of weed or and you know, why drugs or substances. Why are they doing this, though? It's because they are afraid people like the Rockefellers are afraid of people using natural sources of medication, you know, marijuana mushrooms whatever things that come out of the ground right uh that natural remedies yeah because yeah. it, it competes with them being able to hook us on prescription drugs it's just yeah i mean it all comes back to money at the end of the day and the government let's not forget the government is very involved in the drug trade secretly it's really crazy like josh and i have seen some stuff on that that's just wild yeah it, it is it's, it's like it's a total conspiracy it is it really is though it is a real conspiracy and it is a real thing and there's a lot of real evidence to suggest that there's a lot of drug trafficking quite frankly that goes on with government mm -hmm. agencies and entities mm -hmm. so it's it's i don't know it's very disheartening and and i knew this episode was going to get me just feeling like pretty down about the system because it feels like it's like how do we change it what can we do it seems like it's so set in stone it seems like that's how it is with most of the things that we want to change. Like they feel, it feels so hard to even know where to start and you end up feeling so like helpless, you know, it it's going to take complete what do like, do? reform. It's going to take a, like a takeover, <laughs> like a revolution to Literal, change things. Yeah. A complete revamp of the system from mm -hmm. ground, you know, ground zero, just literally redo the whole thing. Cause not only do you have the you know racism issues and people of color being locked up unfairly and being literally uh, targeted by police, I mean the the stop and frisk in New York, things like that. To I've been on literal ride-alongs where I've literally witnessed the um, police officer I was with racially profile somebody, literally just straight up tell me he's like anybody that looks like they're probably dealing drugs, probably dealing drugs things like that and that's their excuse to pull them over and obviously their actual excuse is like you made an improper lane change that's all they got to do they only have to provide like some little thing in order to pull you over and then as yeah. we see time and time like again they just abuse their power and abuse their ability to make people do especially people of color do what they want them to do and yeah pull them out of the car when they don't have a right to do it and mm -hmm. they you know question them and beat them and just do all sorts of crazy or things. Or shoot them and kill them. Exactly. 
God. I mean, how many times For is no that going to fucking Unarmed. happen before Unarmed, people admit yeah. there's a problem? Unarmed. Good God. And that's the thing. So and what, depressing. I, when it, from the training that I took, the only time you should ever, ever, ever discharge your service weapon is if you feel you fear that your life is literally hanging in, you know, it's a life or death situation. And not only if you just feel and, that, right, there has to be good fucking reason. But there's got to be a reason. There's got to yeah. be a weapon there that could hurt you. They got to be coming at you aggressively. They got to be. Well, here's the thing. It's still very loose about what that means. And so people, cops do this on, you know, every month there, it seems like we hear about a story like this where a cop yeah. ends up shooting somebody yeah. and they're like, I feared for my life because he was coming at me aggressively. But then you and see technically tapes by people... law, right? By law, though, that's the thing. The laws have to be rewritten around this. Like they have to create new policies around when a cop should be able to use, you know, force like that deadly force. So, for instance, I can't remember his name. There's so many of them that it's sad. But the one he was running away from the, the officer. Yeah. Well, and that this was, guy just unloaded straight, his gun into someone, straight murder. Into him. That's just murder. So my question is. It, when you're training. Did did they tell you anything about like you shoot once and you don't aim it at? Are you supposed to like make sure you aim to kill, or are you supposed to aim at like their foot, or how many times are you supposed to shoot? Well, that's are you the, ever supposed to unload your weapon into someone unless they are literally coming at you with another with a weapon? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's the problem, though. Is like they do teach you that if you are gonna use your weapon, you're gonna you're gonna shoot to kill, not to in, like it's never to you're not gonna shoot to maim or try to injure somebody. It's shoot to kill. That's what they teach police officers but it's got to be in a situation where you could be killed you could be severely injured and that's where you have the right to do it but that's what what's happened is is that cops think that you know i mean the bad apples out there think that they can get away with it with this kind of loose loose you know policy there is around mm -hmm. this because there's not anything really defining like what is a situation that falls under this right to use deadly force you know it's very, you know, and that's the thing is cops work for the government. The government works for the state and that's the court system. So they've got their backs. They're going to protect their officers. They're going to protect, you know, they're always going to choose that side over the victim. Unfortunately, that's just the reality of things. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, obviously, we have seen some justice be served for cops that have been literally, you know, removed from their positions, fired and even put in prison for charges of of murder and things and like that be. So. they shouldn't be treated any different no but the those the sad reality is is that they are like mm -hmm. you know they are and as we've seen in so many of these cases where police have fucked up or have done a horrible job not following protocol breaking the law literally staging like all these different things mm -hmm. oftentimes there's no repercussions for that no nope. there's no accountability so that, and that just makes it worse because then people are just gonna do it because they see other people get away with it. If you crack down, less people would fire their weapons. Well, that's the thing. Exactly. If if a cop knew that he has a very good chance of being tried and, and getting charges put on him for going to prison. That's what I always thought. I always thought it was a very I was like, you know, when I was thinking about being a cop, I was like, I'm never going to I'm never going to, you know, even think remotely about firing my weapon unless somebody is firing a weapon at me. Because here's the thing, right? You have other tools. You have mace. You have tasers. You have other non-lethal ways of of controlling somebody. But cops. But I think I think the problem too just comes back to like the people that are being accepted into these police officer programs and things like that, and they're not get being trained properly. Mm -hmm. They like all cops should be like mixed martial artists. They should all be required to be like jujitsu. Yes. Like they should know how to disable somebody, take somebody to the ground properly you know, with these types of mixed martial arts, because it's, you know, you're not going to kill the person, but you're going to be able to deal with that situation. So the yeah. fact that that, you know, they do teach you some of that stuff. They do teach, you know, Krav, Krav Maga, self-defense, things like that, which yeah. is great. And more cops should be trained that way. But let's let's what's the reality here? The reality is there's police departments are underfunded. A lot of the times they don't have the resources or the money to provide this training and you know every cop's got a gun so they're like you know use that as your your tool so to speak and you know 
we're all human, so cops, could, you know, you could make a mistake. Yeah. I mean, shit, you're in situations where you can't, you know, like the kid, the kid who was just trying to get into his mom, his oh, uh, yeah. grandma's house or his mom's house. Oh, my God. And he God. got shot at the door and the cop thought he had a gun or was, was like reaching so for sad. a gun. He had a cell phone. They thought it was a gun. And that's oh the my thing God, is that like. fucked up. I don't know. I, I feel like something's got to change with that because that's the thing is they do tell you that if somebody reaches, if somebody reaches for a weapon or looks like even looks like they're reaching for a weapon, you have a right as a police officer to shoot them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Maybe it's time we change that and be like, you know what? You became a cop because it's a dangerous job and it, there's risk involved with it. So you're not allowed to shoot at somebody unless you see actually see a weapon and they have a weapon confirmed on them. Mm -hmm. But then it's like it's just like such a tough situation. Like what do you how do you How do you deal with that in every situation like you can't and if you're if you're a cop and you're like You know cops adrenaline's pumping. Yeah, they're, it they're is. Like, I can see how they get scared. I Don't know though, man But it's like it just happens too much. I feel like yeah, and it happens to black people mainly right you well, know, that's the thing. like is that part of the reason they're scared like it's just stereotyping. Yeah, yeah That's the sad reality of it for sure. I think they have to be cracked down on because we just like It's very scary how many Women of color feel the need to tell their children What to do and like how to deal with police because they're afraid of them being shot mm -hmm. like this is not a world For them to be growing up in. it's fucked up. It's so bad. So we have like we have to start Cracking down on this stuff, even if we feel like, oh, well, he was confused or he was, you know, it that doesn't work for this. Regard Someone's regardless, life. though, every single incident needs to be, you know, reviewed, reviewed by an outside independent investigation and everything needs to be reviewed. All of the evidence needs to be reviewed. And, and I feel like sometimes that doesn't happen. And, you know, people get, you know, police get away with very, very questionable action you know actions and officer involved shootings and things like that so i don't know it's so complicated that's the thing about this is like we're just like <laughs> giving opinions and and thoughts on this but this can go a lot of different ways there's a lot of reasons there's a lot of things that you know we probably haven't even mentioned that go into all of this it's just such a complicated system and you know because there's so many unique situations like this criminal justice system needs to reflect that just like a bicycle works best when it uses different gears based on the train that you're on We need a justice system that has different responses for different situations Shifting gears to treatment prevention and long-term public safety solutions as appropriate Also by taking a practical approach to criminal justice reform We can decrease crime enhance public safety and make more responsible use of our resources Because that's the thing is the system the way that it is right now is just like so like, you know, you do this equals this and in every situation It doesn't you know, it doesn't always align with what you're being charged with They have to put charges on you, but the charges may not even fit the crime They may not even know what to do with you. So they put something on you. That's completely unrelated to what you did It just seems like there's a lot of guessing a lot of guessing going on Yeah, there is and that we can't guess when it comes to people's life no, you know? well, that's especially people's lives. We can't guess we need to have a system that works for all types of situation But also differs drug related offenses should have their own court system with their own, you know, their own type of punishment treatment mm -hmm. Involved process. It shouldn't be the same as somebody that, you know Murders their family. It shouldn't be the same thing So let's see one of something else. I want to talk. So let's talk about the rest of the world in comparison to the US so other countries have vastly different criminal justice systems obviously from the US following disease outbreaks and overcrowding in its prisons in the late 1990s the Russian government took deliberate steps to lower its inmate population today the country incarcerates roughly 681,000 inmates about the same per capita as the state of New Jersey according to the New York Times Germany and the Netherlands incarcerate citizens at a rate roughly one-tenth the rate of the US and sentence prisoners to jails that focus on rehabilitation and re-entering society and Many Latin American countries from Brazil to Costa Rica to Mexico have banned life imprisonment altogether They should so we are like one of the only countries that still hands out life sentences 
on the regular like and but they've eliminated it completely yeah like some of them have no life imprisonment whatsoever See, though that's like mm, but some they have rehabilitated better right but ha but they don't deserve that chance like who are you to just say that they can't well Based i think upon there's a what? lot of people out there who are psychopaths who aren't going to change and they know how to make it look like they have and that's very frightening especially people who've killed multiple people well in these types they of situations right. there well no, no no they do but i'm saying like they have different they're they don't just like release them back into the wild necessarily they <laughs> release them into the wild well, literally but they like p put them in a uh you know put them in a psych facility like they have to they move from a prison cell to like a psychiatric facility where they're under watch things like that okay okay well then in that case yeah i guess but i don't think they should be let out okay depending on what they did though there's some people that deserve to be in prison for the whole life okay i think so i think when you take a life from multiple people knowingly you might deserve that but i don't know i mean it's it's such a hard it's such a hard situation because it's like how could that person ever possibly you know repay that debt that they did but at the same time it's like well, you're, you you're, someone's you're life. just you're a life for a life is your your stance is like no not necessarily depending on the situation but if they killed multiple people for fun or tortured them but what but when you look but that's the thing though right you look at these people that do these types of crimes there's uh, there's always an underlying thing it seems there's always an underlying condition and experience a traumatic event a childhood something that, that yeah. fucked them up yeah he, fred and rose west even their parents were off like do you blame because like here's the thing right all killers serial killers included were children once they were all we were all just innocent children once nobody's born evil do you believe people are born evil and like wanting to murder people yeah you do Yes. Really out of the womb. They're fucking like uh, I'm gonna murder there are people. people that are serial killers that their parents were completely normal that they had perfectly good lives went to college So or, there might be there's some just people some people are just psychopathic dude or they have this like evil But those people them. have These conditions these mental conditions Maybe So there you're right. I will be open-minded and say maybe there is just like an evil gene That's just like you got this gene. You're just a fucking evil person and there's no hope for you basically there's no hope. so a good come. case to look at this uh dang what's this hang on i need to look this up for a second derek robbie who was his killer eric something derek robbie because i i talked about eric smith okay this is an interesting case because i talked about this on my channel and basically this kid committed this crime he killed another four-year-old little boy at age 13 and it was really brutal he like beat him with rocks it was really bad and now he's an adult and he's every two years they give him another Pearl probation hearing, hearing pro Pearl hearing, whatever. And he's trying to get out. And in my video, I said that I feel sympathy for him because he was abused. He went through a ton of shit and he was 13 when he did this. Yeah. He's changed a lot since then. He's very remorseful. He feels, you know, and I, I said, I started questioning my audience. Do you think someone like this should be able to get out? Like he was 13. Should his whole life be in prison? And I kind of lean towards he should be able to get out, especially if they're able to prove that. So I don't know. It's kind of hard. And a lot of people got really mad at me for saying that. It's like one of my videos that there's a lot of controversy on because I said, I mean, it's hard. I have more passion for I have more compassion for kids who made mistakes. I definitely don't think if you're a child when you commit a crime, he was 13 and was tried as an adult. For what reason? He's yeah, a kid. that's not that's not fair at all. Sentenced to life in prison at 13. I mean, it's I just that's where all. I have a problem. So in the case of kids committing crimes, which there's plenty, kids that killed their parents, all types of weird stuff. But that's the thing, though, right? Is I get like emotions are heavily involved with this, and I get that I could never possibly know that feeling of loss and just utter destruction. You know of having somebody do something horrific to me or my loved ones that I couldn't possibly understand how it feels and I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna you know fight that at all because I don't know I don't yeah. know I might feel differently I might feel right. like they should die or you know be right. locked up in prison forever I think if that's, that the, hard to me. Thing that's is, the hard thing is yeah. it's emotional it's so emotional and you know you're so tied in with that that right. it's hard to look at it rationally and logically because here's the thing is like Everybody's getting tried under the same system. So 
this might be beneficial for you personally because you had something done against you. But then again, somebody else who's completely innocent possibly is getting completely fucked on the other side of things. Like that's the problem with this is right. the blanket system as it exists now is just, yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't work. work for everybody. It doesn't that's work for everybody. It works it's sometimes, not, fair. not always. It's not. Yeah. There's no, there's no real justice happening. I mean, you look at cases like this, this kid spending his whole life in jail or whatever, and then you look at Casey Anthony, who's free, who clearly killed her little girl. She is free. That's the problem with the criminal right, justice system. Right. OJ Simpson being free shows us a problem with the criminal justice system, that it comes down so hard on some people, and then like a little peck on others. Yeah. Just a little slap on the wrist, go back to your life. It's very true. Well, it comes back to like we talked about in a previous episode about like maybe we need like a professional jury system that's like professionals yeah. that are knowledgeable that understand the way It'd things work. It'd be so work. expensive though. I don't know how that's doable. That's the thing. How would be. you pay? You know, how would you, you know, fund that? Because it would create jobs though. It would create jobs, but the problem is, is that our prison, the our prisons are horrible. Like they are. Here's a, here's a st uh, statistic for you. So. In 2004, more than 40 state prison systems have been under some form of court order, whether it be for brutality, overcrowding, poor food, or lack of medical care. And that's in 2004. So I bet you that number is doubled at least, if not tripled. And as we've seen literally on TV, like these jails are absolutely awful. People are getting sick. People, there's feces. I mean, it's really, really bad. Overcrowding is the biggest thing, right? There's too many people locked up that really don't need to be locked up in cages with along with all these other very violent offenders you know why can't we figure out a different solution why do they all like why does everybody get lopped into the same bucket you know why isn't there any why isn't there any differences between crimes like why is everybody yeah, punished the same the like same. that's stupid that doesn't make any sense no. that's so antiquated and dumb like there should be different court systems for different things it it needs to be redone because this is this is kind of mind boggling, especially if you've never even known about this. But Norway, nor in Norway, less than four thousand of the country's five million people were behind bars as of August two thousand fourteen. And when criminals leave prison, they actually stay out. The country has the lowest recidivism rates in the world at twenty percent. The majority of crimes reported to police in Norway are theft related with violent crimes typically linked to drug trafficking and gang problems. To, re to reiterate, in the U.S., 76.6% .6 of prisoners are rearrested within five years. So that's our rate. Almost 80% of people are rearrested within five years after leaving prison because the prison system eats you up and then spits you back out and then you just come right back because you don't know what the hell to do. Norway takes advantage of a concept called restorative justice, which aims to repair the harm caused by crime rather than punish people, something the U.S. should consider. Don't you think? Yes. Especially for nonviolent offenders. Because as you're seeing, if you're watching this on YouTube, prison cells in Norway are pretty humane and, and not bad. Like, some, like, it's not great. It's still like a small room, but at least... You have like your own room and you have like a bathroom and a decent place to to be at where you're not going to that we saw on that one documentary. You know what I'm talking about? I believe it was Norway. It was either Norway. It was, was might have been Sweden. They're very similar, though. They're There's very a similar. documentary called what is it called? Where to Michael invade Moore's, next? Michael yeah. Moore. Really interesting and eye opening about just the world. Uh, and they toured a prison. I think it was Sweden. It, might, it could have been Norway, but they literally had full access to kitchens with knives. These were like killers that they were rehabbing. It kind of looks like a college dorm. Room. It does. Like it's, it, it doesn't look does. bad. It's, no. it's better conditions than like a lot of people in the world though. Oh yeah. It's way better. I mean, we'll talk about the, the flip side to it, but I, wa I wanted to read this uh, for you. This is from a uh, reporter uh, with the Huffington Post who went to the prison in Norway and she found herself interacting with two deckhands on the ferry to Bastoy Island We are criminals one of the men told her really we are criminals. Are you afraid? She said no and was then offered a handshake and an introduction. I am Wigo. He told her 
He was serving a 21-year sentence, which is the maximum in Norway, though he'll likely be out next year. We work the 6 to noon shift, Cato, the other deckhand and prisoner said. Then we go back to prison and relax or exercise. Come, you want to meet the captain? He is not a prisoner, the only one who isn't on this boat. When many picture prisoners serving time in the U.S., they certainly don't envision them working on a boat. But Norway is different. As the boat sets sail, I spied with Stoy a cluster of gangly pine trees and a gray sea stretching toward a gray sky. Inside the boat's small seating area, Cato sat down next to me and turned on the TV, flipping to the History Channel. Wigo says that people think Bastoy is a summer camp, but being a prisoner, he knows all too well the difference. Wigo was right. It did look like a summer camp. Model leaves fell on cyclers, yes, cycling prisoners, and a horse and carriage centered by, or cantered by. Gingerbread houses dotted the landscape. There were dull yellow with green trim and red roofs. I spied sheep and cows, but no fence or barbed wire. Bastoy is an open prison, which means prisoners can sometimes keep their jobs on the outside while serving time of norway's prisons 30 percent are open and bestoy is considered one of the best more prisons should be open almost all should be we take as many as we can here but there isn't room for everyone explained bestoy's governor or the warden named tom the island houses about 115 men overseen by more than 70 staff members there's a perception that Oh, this is a lightweight prison. You just take the nice guys for the summer camp prison. But in fact, no, our guys are into, pardon my French, some heavy shit, drugs and violence. And the truth is some have been problematic in other prisons, but then they come here and we find them easy. We say, is that the same guy you call difficult? It's really very simple. Treat people like dirt and they will be dirt. Treat them like human beings and they will act like human beings. Tom explained. Basically, he goes on to say that this system is simply humane, and it sounds like a, pl- a rehabilitative place. They have a supermarket where the, the prisoners can actually go and buy ingredients to cook meals for wow. themselves. They have unlimited uh, use of the phone. Wow. And they, they're there for years. One guy spent 18 years in the prison, is now living in a neighborhood. He got re-released. He's a normal old guy. No one cares. And you find this a lot. I have many friends who've been to prison Norwegians are very forgiving people. Interesting. So that is the reality in other countries. And I mean, obviously, that's a very like pristine example of what prison could be like. And maybe that wouldn't work here. But we've never tried it. We've never even remotely tried. Because here's the thing, right? On every prison show that you see locked up, whatever it is, you always hear the prisoners say, I just want respect. I just want some respect. Because they don't feel like human beings in there because how could you, right? You get treated like an animal or worse. You get treated like just crap, like just shit. Like you, you don't get treated like anything, which again, some people might deserve that, but nonviolent people that committed a theft or grand theft auto or, well, some of them are like, I mean, some of the guards are brutal on them too. Yeah. Or like women who get raped in prison. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the whole other thing is like some nonviolent people, who didn't, you know, did something fairly petty and then go to prison, end up getting assaulted and crimes committed against them while being in prison because prison is not a safe place, as we all know, in the U.S. at least. No. Whereas Norway, they've taken a different approach to the criminal justice system and provided a rehabilitative approach for people that have murdered people, people that have done really heinous things, and they are able to rehabilitate these people. So could that ever happen here? Absolutely. Absolutely. But it would take a lot. Not as long as the prison industrial complex exists. Yeah. And this shit's going to this shit will blow your minds. I just want to go through this because this this is what it's all about. So prison is a big business and working prisoners are a corporation's dream. Prisoners are being contracted for work right now on a massive scale. And despite the alarming and unsustainable growth of inmate numbers in the United States, incentive to lock up people is only increasing. Prison labor based in private prisons, which yes, people, there are private prisons, which are for profit, is a multi-million dollar industry with its own trade exhibitions, conventions, websites, and mail order internet catalogs. If you didn't know that, you can literally order product from a prison 
The industry also has direct advertising campaigns, architecture companies, construction companies, investment houses on Wall Street, plumbing supply companies, food supply, armed security, and many more. Furthermore, private prisoners at the state level produce a variety of goods and services from clothing to toys to telemarketing and customer service. The private federal prison industry also produces nearly all military goods from uniform helmets to ammunition along with durable goods ranging from paint to office furniture. So the corporate stockholders profit from ex this exploitation of, of prisoners, which I'm not, ag I'm not against like prisoners working. I think yeah. giving them a job to do and giving them something to work on is, is absolutely a good thing. But yeah, I don't think, I think the exploitation of, of prisoners so that corporate entities and, and rich people can get richer yes. is there's something wrong with that. Right. So let's, I wanted to talk about this because I think you'll find this very eye-opening. There's actually a surprising number of well-known corporations who are making a killing off of the prison industrial complex. Here are just a few you might have heard of. Number one, Whole Foods. The state allows inmates to work for the profit of a private corporation. And Whole Foods is one of the many companies that takes advantage buying fish and cheese That's produced crazy. by prison inmates and paying them a rate of 74 cents a day, which again, like, wow, whether or not you want to pay them minimum wage, but to pay them literally like cents is just pure wrong. It's like, slavery. Like what if these guys are really working hard? They're nonviolent offenders and they're trying to like save up some money. So they have a little bit of money when they get out that they can like survive and actually make it. But instead, kind of scary they're too. getting fucked over. If they were being paid well, they'd probably do better job too. Yeah. Yeah. And this is where we're buying our food from. Yeah. Ew. And then what they do with this cheap labor, Whole Foods then increases the price of the product astronomically. Til tilapia raised by inmates, for example, sells for eleven ninety nine a pound at Whole Foods. Wow. And they wow. basically they just reap all the profits. Yeah, and they're paid seventy four cents a day. A day. Oh my gosh. I don't That's even think that wild. can get them ramen noodles in prison. For a whole day's work, they can't even get a cup of cup of noodles. That's insanity. Because they only made seventy four cents. What? McDonald's, which it's no secret that McDonald's is suffering right now in a world where people are steadily waking up and moving towards a healthier lifestyle. There is no place for such heavily processed and unethical food. Yet, despite being the world's most successful fast food chain, they still source many of their goods from prisons, including con their containers, uniforms, and cutlery. The inmates who sew the uniforms hardly make anything. Wow. So these corporations are literally just like just using free it. free labor. Well, a lot of these corporations tie back to those families. And yep. it's pretty obvious that they set this up to so be like this. It's absolute like it absolutely. It's literally makes modern sense. slavery. Literally. Walmart. I mean That's who's wild. surprised by that? Purchase products from prison farms. It's where they uh where they have to work in difficult conditions without sunscreen, water, or food. And basically working for free. Victoria's Secret. Oh, those Undergarments fucks. and casual wear are sewn by female inmates for Victoria's Secret. In fact, in the late 1990s, two prisoners were placed in solitary confinement for telling journalists they were hired to replace Made in Honduras garment tags with Made in USA tags. Oh, wow. Crazy. That's crazy. And they were placed in solitary confinement. Yeah. That's fucked up. Wow. So, so that's Victoria's Secret. British Petroleum. AT&T and Aramark, which is a company that provides food to hospitals, schools, and colleges. They have a monopoly on food served in approximately 600 prisons. They have a history of poor food service, a problem which led to a prison riot in Kentucky in 2009. So these are just some of the corporations that benefit hugely off of inmate labor and exploitation of, of basically modern human slavery, it seems like. I mean, if you're going to do that, like, that's the thing, like, even in, they, they talk about a lot of this in Orange is the New Black, a lot of these, like, issues with prison and stuff, like, working and not getting paid, like, they won't, the prison won't even provide them with jobs, so they have no way to make money, they have no way to get money, like, nobody's giving them money on the outside, so they can't get commissary, because that's, like, how you get a lot of your essential goods, like, remember, in, like, we just saw in Orange is the New Black, like, the women couldn't even get, like, maxi pads or like tampons or you know essential items 
that females need like yeah. they couldn't even get that which that's like a reality too that's like obviously based off some a real life situation yeah like that's just fucked up it's like so you're not even gonna up. provide basic necessities that you know <sighs> that's female so like humans dehumanizing need. It's sick it is so so sort Definitely of only makes you feel <laughs> It you does. Know, it makes you feel a little hopeless because it's like, what do we do? What do we do? Well, yeah, I was just saying it makes you like appreciate your life and freedom. It does. And it makes you never want to commit a crime. That's no. for sure. Because, mm. you know, once the system is not fair, it's not just. You're you know, you're not guaranteed anything. As soon as you're arrested, you're not you know, you're you're not guaranteed anything. And the best legal advice is shut your mouth and get your get a lawyer, get a lawyer involved if you're ever involved. Because, you know, some people are just like, what about people that are literally just in the wrong place at the wrong time? Right. Like Stanley Yelnat. <laughs> Stanley Yelnat. <laughs> From Holes, you know? Like, yeah. he got fucked, dude. He got, he got totally hit with fucked. those shoes. But he was in the right place at the right time because it was all supposed to happen that way. It's true. Madame Zeroni. In the end, it did, but. Taking it's just Hector Zeroni up the hill. <laughs> we actually Take just watched that movie. That's why I, like, remember it so well. That's a great movie. I just Well, I, I watched the it. whole thing, like, really recently. I love that movie. Mm. But it's a good, I mean, it's an example of. <laughs> My dad always would say. Shia LaBeouf. Shia But if you, like, we're, we're all humans. We're not prone to make, you know, we're not prone to not making mistakes. So, like, what if you make a mistake or you're just driving, you accidentally, like, hit somebody, you kill them. Like, what happens? Like, you're not a bad person. You're not, like, a criminal at heart. It was just a shitty right. thing that happened to you. A good example of this is I actually, like, just know of someone from my community, did never meet them personally, but... They got in a drunk driving accident and killed two women, two older women. Like they were selling Mary Kay or something and he hit them. And I don't even know what his sentence ended up being, but like he felt so bad, but he was drinking in like the middle of the day Yeah, and it's two women's life. So what do you do? Like it's, it's hard because clearly he's not an evil person. Right. That's, that's the thing that I have more sympathy for is understanding when people just like have fucked up. Versus when they're evil some of the best people out there have fucked up and like literally gone to prison. Yeah, literally like yeah. some of the best people out there have literally they had a them. fucked up situation and they ended up in prison yeah. where they report they literally got fucked up even more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that's reality. So like to wrap things up like what do we do? What are some ideas to improve the system because it needs improving and it seems like no matter how much we talk about this or how much the media talks about this, especially the lamestream media, nothing ever seems to come up, come of it. You know, no yeah. matter what politicians get elected that say we're going to change and everything else, we're going to change the system, we're going to do prison reform and everything else, nothing ever happens because the corporations are so heavily entrenched into the prison system is my, my theory. Yeah. But here's some ideas. For one, when talking about the police, Return mm -hmm. to community policing. I think this is basic. I can't That's believe this doesn't thing. happen yet. Well, some people are doing it. That's yeah, the thing. There like, are, there's some there great are. officers. Officer Daniels. Oh, oh my gosh. I always forget the name of this one police officer I follow on Instagram. That's just such. He's so involved with his community. He's a great example yeah, of community there's a policing. Lot. There's actually a lot. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, you know, like as we've seen on like Instagram cops yeah. that are like Trying showing to up to it. public events and like interacting with people versus just being like, you know. All alone in their cars just yeah. driving around yeah. all day, you know, yeah, they're in the community They're visiting people. They know their communities names. They like meet the locals right. and It's a totally different thing and It's a shame that like it's not for that that kind of stuff is not mandatory you know? Yeah, like you should I think you should be I Think you should live in the community in which you police. Yes agreed if you're a police agreed. officer You should live in the community that you police yeah. because a that'll help you do your job Far better because that's the agree. thing like most cops do not work where they live and they're the reasoning for that is because of the safety issue with it which I kind of do understand because it's like you know you don't want some bad dude showing up at your house because that's the thing is people yeah, are like crazy true. these days that's so true. like there have been cops that have been murdered at their house by gang members and things like especially if you like patrol in like a really gang infested area like it can be very dangerous but at the same time it's like I think that if you were to look at the statistics at how often that happens versus how much good it would do, it would be, um, are you talking about the one that's on live PD? No. Oh, 
I'm trying to find this guy that I follow that's just Stick. so great. Sticks, I think is his he, name. Oh, his name is Tommy Norman. T Norman 23. He's doing he, he's 110% committed to making a difference, inspiring the world. He's all about community police work and showing how a pol police should exist in their community and he highlights community like citizens that's great. Yeah. and he's just so good. See, that's great. That's yeah. that's what should be the the standard for police right. officers. Right. And that's why people can't bunch them all into a group and right. say things like fuck the police. Because yeah. it's offensive. Yeah. And I see how that bothers people and I see why people are angry at police. There's obviously so much that needs to be done, but like there's people like him out there that are really, really gonna change the system. If anyone's gonna change it, it's gonna be people on the inside. Yep. So I think it's so cool. I think it's really cool his department allows him to kind of be this. Well, it's great to see figure. that we are seeing the culture with these police departments change a bit and letting them be more open. Like they've been doing like lip sync challenges, just yeah. little things to kind of make themselves more visible, make them humanize, you know, yeah. humanize themselves. Because that's the thing is like, yes. they need like cops just need to humanize themselves to the rest of us because a lot of us just like, Living I mean, fear. how many of you out there literally like if you see a cop behind you while get you're scared. driving, yeah. kind of get like a little nervous <laughs> or your heart drops in your stomach. And you're like, oh, even though you are doing nothing wrong, yeah. everybody gets that like feeling of like, oh, shit, you I'm in trouble. You should see a police officer and think to yourself, I'm safe. Not I'm scared. Right. I'm worried. I don't want to. I, I don't want to yeah. run into this guy. It's like, yeah, it's like you have like a killer behind you or something. Yeah. We all act like we're all or some of them that just stand there like with their arms crossed and like glaring, just glaring. and mean mugging everybody. Like you're stuff. here yeah. to protect me. Why right. are you acting like you're like against us? Yeah, yeah, like we're in the military and you're our right. leader. Right. Well, that's it's the like... thing too is like there is a lot of like militarization of the police and the police departments, and you know they say because of these new risks and. You know all these different things that have come about in this modern era but i think that we we need to go the other way the this way of community policing and being visible humanizing mm -hmm. themselves that's why there's an organization called humanizing the badge which officer daniels is involved with yes who's officer actually daniels. uh if you've ever heard of yeah, officer daniels he's that's another one it's kind of crazy he is actually a used to be a security guard at my high school and josh was like friends and with a him. good buddy of mine actually we i went on a ride along with him before he's mm -hmm. just a really great guy he's he's uh he had a vine he was a vine star and did a bunch of like really funny police you've vines. probably seen you've his probably seen ones, his yeah. vines so i'll i'll link his stuff but for he's him. also a great example of uh community stuff and yeah, his nonprofit is humanizing the badge his is officer daniels underscore one he has almost five hundred thousand followers so cool that's stuff. that's great and i hope more police follow after that and i think what if we kind of rebuild this police culture and humanize them and make you know because that's the thing right they're just a human being like you or i there's nothing different about them from a like human perspective they're not yeah you know they're not they're it's not like they're never going to make a mistake either like right. we have to be understanding of when they do mess up but at but the same it. time it's like people shouldn't be like dying at and, the hands of police as yeah. much as they do. And they shouldn't be just like getting to go back to work. We can yeah, forgive right, people, right. but you're done. Yeah. Like that's it. Yeah, I agree. I don't know. It seems like one of the biggest things that could be done is people within the system trying to make changes going outward. Yep, exactly. I mean, there's a lot of different things. We could stop the use of solitary confinement in prisons particularly for juveniles and detention facilities because solitary confinement just it messes with your messes fucks with your you head up, yeah it really fucks you up long term and that's that's like a psychological proven you know issue mm -hmm. obviously there needs to be way more prison accountability and leadership to reduce violence in prison because there's tons of people that get assaulted and, and even killed in prison when it should be a safe place it should be it's not but you know support for alternatives to arrest and incarceration programs there should be more mental health centers drug treatment options you know i, th I think the biggest thing is like the, once the war on drugs officially gets ended and you know things like marijuana and different types of very you know non-dangerous substances that have shown you know people can't get addicted to things like that are made legal across the nation it's legal in canada it's going to be legal across the u.s pretty soon i think we're going to see you know inmate population go down hopefully unless they just find something else to you know 
feed this prison industrial complex. That's the thing. It's just such a such Business. a complex thing. But I think I think this whole minimum sentence thing for the you know for every crime, kind of like a one one size fits all thing when it comes to sentencing, is ridiculous. Yeah, you know, just because you you know there shouldn't be like a mandatory minimum sentence of like twenty years for selling selling drugs or something like that's craziness yeah like, that is especially marijuana especially like. marijuana exactly ending the death penalty because it costs millions uh millions to do to even keep people to do that plus other countries have were here's an interesting fact europe and most of, them, of the americas have abolished it leaving the united states in the company of china north korea and pakistan on the list of countries who retain the punishment so that's pretty interesting China, North Korea, and Pakistan, and us are the only ones that still have a death penalty. Wow, everyone else has kind of like moved on. Yeah, or but it's kind of wild figured thinking out about ways. how it used to be, though. Like, well, yeah. straight up just no trial execution. Well, we were in the talking streets. about like the Wild West days. Like, if yeah. you robbed somebody and like murdered somebody, you would be like hung in the town square like the yep. next day. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing: Off does that the actually head. deter crime at the end of the day? Did it was like well, I think back then like people were like fuck. I don't want that to happen to me I'm gonna lay low and but I think people life. I don't think it deterred That's the thing about is does it deter people? Does the idea of being like executed? Maybe or, there weren't as many executions back then. Maybe there was less crime there probably was But there's also less people right Compared to now but like we people don't, were in desperate times back then too. There wasn't like I don't know people are in desperate times now It's that's worse. True. That's true. It's actually worse now I just feel like that would be really scary. Like as a criminal, I'd be like, eh, I'm not, I'm good. You know, like seeing someone get hung or burned. Yeah. Well, yeah, you would think, but some people just like doesn't phase them. Death doesn't phase them at all. Or like death's the not witch trials. A, that's they like were just a nice burned. punishment. Remember the, yeah. you know, Salem burned witch trials, no stake. trial. Well, yeah. I guess they did have a trial, duh, the Salem witch trials. <laughs> but like a completely ridiculous, unfair trial based on bullshit. I mean, this, this shit goes back so long. Ever since humanity's been around, we've been... Deal with these issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The question of what should the punishment be? Where do we cross the line? Mm -hmm. It's interesting stuff. And then there's not a simple solution to any of this. I mean, just no. kind of, you know, looking at everything as a whole that we talked about today and like trying to figure out like what's the way forward. I mean, I don't know. I don't I don't know if the current system can even be fixed. I don't I I personally don't even think it's possible. Like, I think we can definitely improve it. And if we, you know, are smart and stick together and come together as as people in order to affect change in the system, I think we can do a lot of good. But at the end of the day, I mean, as long as the corporations have the power that they do yeah. and the hold over the government and the, yeah. the various systems that are in place. We're screwed. Like and that's we're, the truth. Like there is no shafted. way to just fix this. We can work on community policing. We can try to yeah. get whatever we want or petition. Fix. It's, it's not, not going to fix this. No. We need complete revolution, pretty much, to get <laughs> away from the the corporations. As long as these corporations are running shit, we're fucked. That's how I feel. Like, and it's very it's very scary because like, how would any of us deal with taking them down? You can't. You can't. So it definitely leaves you in a place where you're just like, hmm, what do I it definitely? I have so many times where I just leave things feeling so helpless and so frustrated. I mean, I, like I guess this. I guess our hope would be that the more people that that's the thing is a lot of people just aren't informed. They're not woke. They don't know what's going on. They yeah. don't have any idea that this kind of injustice is happening and that things are as bad as they actually are. Mm -hmm. So many people are asleep to all of it because they're just living in their own little worlds going through life and they don't think about anybody else but themselves. And in reality, like a lot of people are are being, you know, in I don't know, I can't even think of the word. It's like just unfairly tried and and, you know, put into this system of ours that literally chews you up and spits you out only to eat you back up again mm -hmm. until you're a shell of a human. I mean, I think a lot of people that are in prison right now have a possibility of being rehabilitated and, and brought back into society as productive citizens. I mean, and, and like, why, why can't we like have them at least do things that like maybe the rest of us don't want to do? Why aren't we having them clean up the trash everywhere? Like, yeah. 
Like if they're, you know, what are they all just gonna like? You can't do that. Like why? I feel like they they do Give that them a, sometimes. Sometimes, it's very yeah. rare though. The good ones do. I think yeah. I've never seen it in actual in person. I've seen it in like movies. Yeah, like they shouldn't like they shouldn't be as separated from society as they are. Just like banned from reality. Like literally, just like exiled. It's like yeah. the old days where they used like to exile timeout. exile you to an island, and then it's yeah. like so long, good luck. Oh wow, yeah. That used to happen, like yeah. and and so people. I think people lose their humanity and lose who they are as a human being because they're literally being treated like scum and and you know uh, some people are scum but it's like I think everybody's got a chance to redeem themselves especially yeah. if you have done something that hasn't harmed another human being mm -hmm. I think you especially have a, a shot to come back and who knows do something great you yeah. know so I don't know we want to know what you guys think about all yeah, this though. I definitely I mean, want to know your guys' thoughts so on this. So very interesting cuz it's just, there's just so much. I mean, we couldn't even like cover everything. And about I'd love this, to but... hear if you personally have someone in prison or you've been to prison, you know, no judgment here. We'd love to hear your story, your experiences and just your ideas on things, your thoughts, what can we do to change things? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah, Crazy. I mean maybe maybe you know, one day we can have somebody on that's actually been been there done that and yeah can really give us a first-hand account of mm -hmm. what it's really what like what they went through was it rehabilitating or was it just de ability or whatever that word is so yeah i don't know guys we definitely want to know what you guys think if you enjoy this podcast and you're watching it please give it a huge thumbs up subscribe on itunes and youtube for future episodes from the mile higher podcast we've got so much good stuff coming so much good stuff is coming down the road so definitely want to stick around for that but yeah that is it for us today and thank you for joining us for episode 31 yes of the mile higher podcast we will catch you guys next time